I'll just record on this computer. <laughs> okay. So I'm recording and welcome everyone. Um, before, um, I think maybe we'll do, do this in any order we want. Let's just do some really quick introductions. I have a tiny little piece I just wanna kind of share because um, I keep thinking about what everyone is doing with their teaching and I'm trying to sort of get some I don't know, dimension around it, let's put it that way. And so I just wanna share this little chart graph I made up and, and go from there and then John will continue because he's really the, the feature of today's session. So I think everybody, I know everyone on this call knows me, I'm Joan Ford and I really appreciate seeing everyone today. This is great, hope we have a, a nice lively conversation about what John is going to present. John, do you wanna go next? Just And then pick a person to introduce themselves from there. <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, okay, I'm John Lavieri. I am <clears throat> uh, presently, uh, for the last, I guess, six years, um, a teacher with RyeFly, um, principally ESOL, although um, at, the, at present I'm also teaching a, an NEDP class and a Transitions to College class. And I've done uh, citizenship classes um, off and on over the years as well. So um, uh, that's um, basically that, I guess. And um, Christina, how about you? You're on mute, Christina. <laughs> um. Christina Cabrera, um, traditional name, Chantip uh, Deer Spirit of the Pocasset Wampanoag tribe of the Poconoke Nation. And I work, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. You want to pick and, I've been teaching, and I've been teaching, and I've been doing all, all kinds of roles in, in adult education, um, teaching, mentoring, education director, executive director of two adult education organizations. Like, yeah, uh, teaching ESOL, teaching transition to college, teaching NEDP, um, teaching leadership development, teaching community organizing. Yeah, just, just. You wanna pick our next person, Christina? <laughs> say anything? Susan. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Susan Kelly. Um, I teach English as a second language at um, RIRAL. I've been there for about um, four years and um, I taught English for academic purposes at another school for six years before that. I don't know what's the matter with our connection here. And um, I teach at RIRAL. I work at RIRAL and um, um, I generally teach the higher level, intermediate, or advanced class. I don't know. Is everyone else hearing this weird? Yeah, all of a sudden, it, I will say all of a sudden it's a little weird. Yeah. And as much as I love everyone's, because um, you all know I do, I want to see yeah. all the faces. We may rotate yeah. some faces in and some faces out just for that reason. So. Yeah, so that's me. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to pick someone so we can go through this quickly? Oh, uh, Nancy. Thank you. Oh. Hi, I'm Nancy Miller, and the good news is my garbage man just came, so the dog stopped barking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am the program coordinator at Redon College, and um, I signed up for this today because we always talk about our Facebook page, which is almost non-existent, and I'm probably the worst technology person, but I'm going to listen and hopefully learn uh, more about how to, uh, to incorporate that more into our program. Nice. Oh, and I'll pick Nadia. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Nadia Diaz. I work at Progreso Latino. I'm the pathway coordinator uh, for the mostly the hospitality Walmart program um, and I'm always looking to find um, ideas, different tools to engage your students. So I'm interested in this workshop. Thank you. And I will pick Katie. Yes, Katie. 
Kathy, you're muted. Unmute. There we go. Hi, I'm Kathy Gray from the Course Skills Partnership. And um, I am more in an, an administrative role now, but I do some subbing in classes, particularly now that we've all had to go virtual. And um, so I just want to learn as much as I can. And uh, I also, Nancy, do the web, the Facebook page here. And oh, it's a challenge for me. But <laughs> um, so, yeah, just here to learn. Thanks. Is there anybody else to pick? I think that's it, right? Uh, I, think, I think we got everyone. Yes, I'm going to say we got everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for trouble, Jack. Okay. Uh, John, before I turn, and thank you all for introducing, I think it's helpful as we're you know, looking at how this can all apply to our to work we're doing. So I'm going to do a super quick screen share here, and then I'm turning it over to John. I promise I will be quick, assuming my mouse works here. Yeah. <laughs> do this. Oh, my goodness. Technology is great, only when it works, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Does everybody see my little uh, my little stool here? Yes. Okay. So this is just my my quick little piece. As I'm excited to hear what John's doing today because you know we what we haven't really been talking a lot about is content, and, and I know that's not the re the total focus of what we're doing here. But I know that, and I and I think it needs to be said that you know everyone who teaches has this content they want to teach, and lots of times it's great content and it's been something you've developed for years and years and years and now that you're working in an online setting it's these other three things that are on the bottom that has to be able to hold up that content um so the first the first little leg i have on here is is the structure um and from what i've heard from different groups i've been with or trainings i've been in is how the structure is super important in you know john's structure right now that he's using he's going to talk a little bit about facebook and I know some people are using Google Classroom and some people do a lot with syllabus and, but there's always some structure that has to go with it. And from what I've heard, the structure piece is super important these days, even, even more important than it was when you just had students walking into the classroom. So the second leg on this is just the communication. And, you know, again, with Facebook, I love the fact that there can be more communication and maybe it can be clearer, maybe it can happen more often. And maybe it can happen in a lot of different ways. So um, no matter what you're doing, that's super important. And one of the things we that I keep hearing that's important is just having regular sort of office hours around the whole idea of communication. And I know with the Facebook, John's actually able to you know set things up and meet with people and, and that kind of stuff too. So that helps. And then my third part on here is is just really about delivery. And yes, we're all doing doing Zoom or doing Google Meet. And as Susan mentioned, when she did hers, we were we were more not we were much more novice at it than we are with those pieces. But it's really not just having um, being able to deliver. It's really to be able to deliver and engage. And I think we're now adding that piece in because we've been doing it for a while. Um, and so I, again, as I think you're going to see with more of John's work is that um you know some of his lessons are short and little and they're different they're not all the same thing over and over again um you can you know you can get students to stand up and move and you don't have to always just be sitting staring at a screen for an hour an hour and a half because we all know how well that works for <laughs> works for me not it doesn't um and i love the fact that there's a lot of social interaction here. so um and i think the key piece on all of this is that none of us should be the people talking too much. It should all be, it should be group participation and that's what we're learning. So, um, you know, as you're looking at what John's presenting with the whole Facebook piece, um, you know, keeping some of this in mind, I, I think is helpful. At least it's helpful for me. So I just want to share my little, um, my little stool here. Um, clearly what my stool doesn't deal with in which I'm not going to go into at all today is, you know, all the other issues that our students have and why it's been you know difficult to get them to engage but that's another whole topic for another whole session so oh boy. Um, that's it we'll leave that there john it's it's all over to you and go forward and 
Uh, you should be able to just, you know, use the screen. You should be able to just okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Joan. Um, thanks for asking me here and thanks everybody for logging in. And uh, I, I really do hope I have something uh, new to offer um, everyone. Um, and, you know, please uh, don't, um, uh, don't hesitate to interrupt uh, with comments or questions as you have them. Um, that would be, that would be very welcome. Um, I'm an ESL teacher, so I'm used to that. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so I guess, um, um, actually, right. Joan, you gave, just gave me a lot more to think about Sorry. also in terms of... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what we're doing and what I've been doing using Facebook. Um, right up front, I do use Zoom um, for my class meetings i have been right since summer um john did you mean to share your screen because i i'm not seeing it if you're if you think um, you're sharing, i'm not seeing it i will i will very shortly okay. but, um i just thought maybe just by way of a background um i started um i created my first uh, facebook group for students about four years ago and um, out of a desire basically to try to get them to practice outside of class a little bit more and to, and to speak to each other more. Um, and at the time I was you know, teaching in Cranston and also in Central Falls in a program there. Um, and I, I wanted to see if I could get people from the two different communities um, talking more in general and talking to each other um, in particular. So I started a group, it's, it was set on private. And, you know, in thinking about coming today to, to talk about it, having um, looked over all of the posts and photos and um, videos over, you know, the last um, couple of years, it's been interesting to see the way that it's changed and it's very much been, um, there's very much been, you know, uh, two sides to this coin uh, being pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. <clears throat> and since the pandemic hit and back in March when we had a staff meeting and, you know, the administration was saying, well, everyone go home for a couple of weeks. We don't know when we're coming back. Um, but please try to stay in touch with these students however you can. I found that my Facebook groups were um, something of a minor lifeline. Um, let me take a look at... Um, I'll show you how... Okay, well, there's a page we don't really need. Um, okay. This is the first group that I started, and this was for um, primarily beginners. Um, it has changed an awful lot. Um, I'm sorry, just trying to move this out of the way. Um, This is the media page that just to give you an idea of over the past, you know, since it started four years ago, um, these are photos that have been posted. Now, more recently, you see it's, it's pretty much a lot of exercises, screenshots of the um, picture dictionary um, for beginners, um, et cetera. As we get down towards the beginning, we can see that, you know, there are a lot more photos and um, from the classroom when we were actually working together in class. And so the idea was to make this sort of an adjunct to what we were doing in the classroom. And we could, you know, I noticed that people would engage a little bit more when they would see their classmate, a picture of their classmate show up on the Facebook page. 
and um, it's like, oh, there's Juana, and um, you know, what color was Juana's shirt tonight? And um, or you know, does anyone remember um, what what Juana's uh, favorite um, flavor of ice cream is? And that would just trigger comments, and especially for beginners who would um, who would have maybe one you know a sentence fragment to type. At least there was something. Um, you know, to get them going. Um, so that also, the, uh, the pictures here you're seeing, some are from groups in Cranston, uh, some in uh, Central Falls. So they're members from two different classes and they would uh, begin to actually talk to each other, which was really, really encouraging um, to see. Um, occasionally I'd take a picture of the whiteboard from that night in class and put that up just to sort of refresh people's memories. Um, and, oops, okay. Um, at one point, okay, I'm sorry, I thought I should have had this. Yes, okay. Um, posting videos, making videos has also been um, great for it. The, the first one I did for my beginners, I'll just, just because, oh no, okay, maybe because this is, maybe because I'm not sharing this directly. I'm sorry about that. Um, Let's see if any of the others are, yeah, okay, okay. All right, um, I guess I can't play the videos for you. I wasn't gonna make anyone sit through an entire video. Um, here's one where the students were, we just made a video of students doing, have, having a conversation practice at a table. And the video is um, a few minutes, okay, it won't tell me. That minute, that video is about um, seven or eight minutes, and it shows different pairs of students from the class asking each other about questions about what they have in their refrigerators at home, and um, basically that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I really like about a couple of the programs where I work is that there's child care. So a lot of my students are able to bring their kids in and I get to know their kids also. And sometimes um, it's very nice to be able to bring the kids into projects that we do. And this was, this was another video I was hoping to show just a, a short um, segment. And this, I'm sure this uh, probably, yeah, probably because I'm not sharing directly with you. Um, John, John, I had a question about what are you using to make your videos? Oh, um, okay. Well, mostly, <laughs> mostly my iPad. And then I've been, I've used a number of different apps for editing them. There's iMovie, which is, which is great. It's simple. Um, uh, I also use the Sony Vegas if there's something a little more involved that I want to do. Um, and that's not a mobile app that you, um, that you have to use on a, on a laptop at least. Um, I also, for example, this one, I was hoping to be able to show um, a couple here where you see the picture of the dessert. Um, uh, Spark video, Adobe Spark video, which you can download on a on a, uh, a phone or a tablet. And I've actually made videos for my classes sitting in my car when I had extra time in the parking lot before I went in for class. And using Spark video, I was able to make the videos on my phone. And then you can automatically post them on Facebook, um, when you hit the when you hit the share um, 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 button, 
um, they'll post automatically. They may take a few minutes to load sometimes, but it's, it's really, really easy. And the response is usually quite good. Um, Joan, I think you mentioned Google Classroom earlier on and well I, I I do also use classroom I find that the um, visually Facebook is much more appealing to people it's more familiar everyone is already on there um, almost uh, you know occasionally there are people who um, who don't like Facebook they're 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 not fans of social media and so they're not on there and um, that is quite a slim minority in my experience though. So, um, so with Facebook, it's easy to reach them. Now with Classroom, they have to have a Gmail address and um, you know, I've had um, situations where I wasn't able to invite someone to join the page um, be because they had Hotmail or, or some other email provider. <laughs> Um, but also, you know, if any of you have used, um, you know, classroom, you can see visually it's much more sterile. And when you post things, the, you know, you'll get a nice, you know, you get a nice visual thumbnail, um, but nothing nearly as eye catching as, as what you'll see on Facebook. So. I, I have found that that students are much more likely to click on something when it's um, um, when the visual is more appealing. Um, John, by the way, I just made you a co-host. I don't know if that means you'll be able to click those videos better, if or who knows. But I just thought that was something worth trying. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Um, ah. I tried. So okay. <laughs> it was worth a try. Um, this is how we learn. We try new things. This is how we learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I had never even heard of Zoom before April. So um, <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. It, yeah, there was a, a couple that. This was a few Christmases ago. Um, here you can see thumbnails. These are this is a video that was made in Cranston where everyone got up and was uh, wishing Merry Christmas to to the entire list of students in the class in Central Falls by name. And I assigned everyone a, a, a specific name to say Happy Holidays. Then. Uh, the next night I was in Central Falls and I did the same thing there and gave them the names of the people in Cranston. And then posting both of the videos on the group, everyone was able to see it. And um, so there was a lot of response to that. Um, you know, a lot of people hitting the like button and typing in comments, which is um, was really exactly what I was hoping to accomplish in the beginning, was just to get people um, being a little more, that much more active um, when they were not in the classroom. Um, okay, here where you see a uh, hundred thumbnails of me needing a haircut. Uh, <laughs> this is this is about the point where uh, the pandemic hit and we were we were all under lockdown and. So my first thought was, well, Facebook is how I reach out to everyone. It was, it was my, um, my default choice. Um, and not being able to see everyone in the classroom, I was using the live streaming feature on our, on our group um, and um, presenting lessons. It was a little bit of a learning curve as you can, I'm not sure if you can see in these thumbnails where the, the whiteboard is reversed. <laughs> and, um, 
and so I had to discover that in the middle of a, of a video with students telling me, um, you know, writing messages that the, um, that the whiteboard was backwards, which I guess was great practice for them. Um, and a little bit embarrassing for their teacher. So I realized that that was not an option. Here with these videos, um, I'll go back over to the photos, I, I guess. Well, that may not even be necessary right away. Here's an example, if you're, if you're able to see this uh, uh, thumbnail, uh, where I'm holding up the Oxford um, uh, Picture Dictionary. Um, I would post a couple of pages from that on our Facebook group so everyone could see it, or if they wanted to, I would encourage people to print out um, material that I was putting up there. Um, and then they would have it so they could see it on the group and then in the in the live streaming video I would present it and we would be able to go down through a numbered list of um, uh, vocabulary words um, hoping that they would follow that. In the beginning in the spring um, and pr pretty much right up through summer those were pretty well attended. Um, I know we probably can't see the video, but on this one, we hey, can- Welcome back. Oh. Welcome back to class. Okay, um, well, I guess you can see these. I hope that um, I hope that more of you can come and join tonight. We've got- um, I guess my career as a talk show host is probably um, not very forthcoming um, <clears throat> and in fact half the time as we're streaming you can see at the bottom of your screen you can see who is watching you can see who's logging in um, at the moment um, so then of course you know I would stop and I would greet everyone by name um, and, and try to encourage them to write comments over here you know, you can see some of the comments that were written on this session. Um, okay, we had a dozen comments and there were 32 people who, um, and you can actually, for attendance purposes, you can actually see who, who was watching the, the video. Now, I probably never had more than, uh, say, a dozen or so people uh, logged on and watching in real time. Uh, but then as soon as you stop the video, you're able to post it on the, on the news feed of the group and people are able to watch it at any time. Um, so I did, I did receive feedback from some students who said, well, I'm working at that time, but I know I can come home and I, I see the video. Um, and so this it was really quite a lifeline for me in terms of be, staying connected with my classes in the in the beginning of the the pandemic. So it was rapidly turning into something completely unexpected um, from the time that I had originally started creating these groups. Um, following, um, so yeah, you can see there are a lot of those. <laughs> by the end of the, by summertime, um, the engagement in those um, live streaming videos had, had dropped off significantly. And so by fall, I decided to stop doing those and try to um, reach everyone using video conference um, sessions with, with Zoom. Um, and at this point, Facebook is still very important in this, in that here, I'm still posting the material, for example, that we would look at. 
And here is um, a screenshot of the whiteboard from that night. And so um, one of the things I like is, you know, when you, when you have a whiteboard in the classroom, it gets erased and that's it. Um, but now we can save that and I can, I can you know. Can you all hear John? I'm sorry? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you? What was that, Joan? Did you have? Can you hear me? Hi, John. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah, I can hear oh, okay. you fine. Okay, great. I didn't know. I didn't know if uh, J Joan had a question or. Yeah, I Joan. Did you lose sound? She's not answering. She must have lost sound. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Yeah. You can go ahead, John. Okay. All right. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for coming. Um, okay, so here was a, just um, an opportunity to sort of refresh everyone's memory from what we were doing that night. And so every time, every time we have a class and there's a new, um, there are a couple of new whiteboard pages that get posted on their, um, on their. Um, on the newsfeed for their for their group, and so and and again, the group allows you to see how many people are paying attention and 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 looking at it. Um, this at this point, I have four groups that I'm. Um, uh, that I'm working with. Um, here is this one, which is called Liquid English, um, which is for a transitions to college group that I work with um, out of the Pawtucket, normally out of the Pawtucket Library. Um, obviously, this is a much more advanced class and the level of interaction um, has been um, obviously quite different. You know, the level of conversation, you know, the amount that people are actually writing or the questions that they ask. Um, just a few posts. Once in a while, try to ask a leading question, you know, to try to just to, to trigger some activity. Also with these groups, it has been kind of a surprise and very useful for me um, in that when, when someone leaves the, a class that I'm teaching, I don't automatically remove them from the group. I always give them some time. Um, and especially if it's because uh, they've gotten a new job or their hours have changed or some kind of family situation has come up. And um, uh, I'll, I'll leave them, you know, there as a member of the group and they can continue to uh, see the posts and post comments um, uh, when they want to. And for example, this group, I uh, just have to move that. Um, yeah, this group has 19 members. Although in this particular class, I have 10 active students. So there are a number of people who left the class, some of whom went back to the countries that they were from originally. And since the pandemic, I've had people, uh, students from Brazil and France, um, join and come back and visit. And it's through the Facebook group that they stay in touch. You know, I'll get a message from this young woman in, in Rio, who's like, well, can, can I come and I join you guys on Thursday? I kind of miss the class. I miss all you guys. Um, uh, one young woman who's living in Paris, um, has been coming regularly, and um, uh, she lives in Paris, so she's, we 
have to sort of keep her under the radar, but she's been a wonderful um, addition to the class. She comes on and, you know, she'll show us, um, you know, she'll turn her laptop around to show us her neighborhood in Paris where she's living. And so the other students get to see that and ask her questions about that. Um, let's see. Going back to the beginning group, there's one um, there's one very nice advantage that this offers um, that I discovered by accident. Um, most of you are probably Facebook users already, and I don't know if on your news feed in the you know, in the window where you're able to create a post, you have this choice um, that's uh, with the camera that marked room. And this is basically a function where you can, if you haven't used it, um, you can create a video chat room. It's very basic. It doesn't have the bells and whistles that, uh, uh, that Zoom or, or Google Meet has. Um, but again, because it's on Facebook and it's really easy. Um, this one I created just a, a, a short while ago. And so I set this up for Monday and at that time on Monday, I'll be there, I'll log on and, um, it will look very much like our zoom, our, our zoom meeting at the beginning before we, we started sharing screens and see video thumbnails of who, whoever uh, joins the room. Uh, it's very easy to set up. You create the post, you choose a name for the room, you save it, you can create a time, or you can start it immediately. And What happens is that, let's see, okay. And then you just post it. And then it, it will appear on the news feed. Okay. So this is the latest post. This one I posted as an announcement and pinned it to the top. So it'd be right there. And um, it'd be the first first thing at the top of the page when when students see the you know, look at the news feed from the group. Um, John, can I ask a question? Absolutely, please. Um, so, you know, you started using Facebook because that's what learners were already familiar with. And now that we're, you know, eight months into the pandemic, as you get new learners, how do you get new learners on board with your Facebook group and how are you inviting them? Did you cover that before I got on? Because I'm sorry I, I came in late. No, no. Um, uh, I didn't cover that, so thanks for asking, actually. Um, because, yeah, um, usually, I, you know, I've been getting new learners either by, um, either through the, the, uh, um, our admin, or by referral from other students. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm sure you've all had that, my friend wants a class. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so at that point, the communication, uh, I've been communicating with people by email and sending them links. Um, you know, I'll just send them an email link to the group and say, okay, to participate in the class, please join the group. And I'll also I'll have your email for, um, uh, for my invitation, my mailing list for, for meeting invitations. Because it's a private Facebook group, so it's by invitation only, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, the, all the groups are private. Um, that, you know, the students seem to feel better about that. Um, you know, that they're not making mistakes in public. <laughs> um, and, you know, especially for occasionally if we have um, undocumented students, um, their privacy is protected. Everyone's privacy is protected that way. Mm -hmm. So, 
so no, I don't, and occasionally, for example, this one, anyone can find the group. Anyone on Facebook can find the group if you, if you search English for everyone, there are probably a few pages with this name. Um, I have to change this because occasionally I get uh, requests to join it from people in all kinds of different places that are just interested in, in, um, uh, in, in, in English lessons online. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's there's uh, some questions in the chat that I thought might be a good time. Do you want to go through them, Joan? Um, John, do you want us to read them or do you want to just go into the chat and look? Um, I can I can take a look. Let me... Okay. Yeah, I would say start at about 240 with uh, Christina and then there's a few others that sort of follow that. You may have answered some of these. I unfortunately had no volume for a few minutes. so. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, well, for Christina's question about organizing the content and also ground rules, um, the content basically is chronological. Um, students need to be able to know how to scroll uh, down the page if they want to see something that's, that's you know, that was posted a while ago. Um, if there's something I want them to look at again, then I'll, I'll, I'll post a comment with a little bump message so it will bump back up to the top of the page. Um, and that's the, that is the drawback um, to social media, I guess. It's, it, it, it's not like cl Google Classroom where you can uh, where you can organize those things um, a little more easily. That, so that is kind of an advantage with Google Classroom. As far as the ground rules that are set up, um, they're basically the same um, ground rules that I would use in the classroom. Everyone show mutual respect and we're here to practice English. So, um, you know, when someone posts something in Arabic or in Spanish, um, you know, there are only so many other students who can understand that. And I'll, usually I'll leave it for a day or two and then I'll remove it. I'll give people a chance to see it. And then occasionally I'll post a little reminder that remember we're here to practice English and not everyone can understand your Spanish or your Arabic. Um, Okay, Susan's question. Um, in that regards uh, uh, about ground rules um, is I have groups on WhatsApp mm -hmm. and, um, and while it builds a lot of community and a lot of communication, just like Facebook, it's a different medium. But, um, you know, with religion and politics, it's a big issue. <laughs> and um, even though we do have um, ground rules and group uh, uh, group rules that everybody has collectively um, uh, created. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is a challenge. And I think that with more social media content or stream, I mean, I, I don't know if you've gotten uh, uh, mm -hmm. videos of, of pastors preaching and stuff like that, but it's, um, it's a very strong, um, political and, and, and religious community in general. And uh, I wonder how you have worked through that or maybe you haven't encountered it. I have encountered it. Um, um, actually, yes, um, not often, but there have been a couple of times where someone posted something religious um, and I ended up removing it um, from the news feed because I just didn't feel that it was um, an appropriate um, place for that. You know, having Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, and atheists all together in the same group, um, uh, you know, when those, 
when those videos or those posts, and I, I, I think I can imagine exactly the type that you're referring to, you know, are sort of geared towards converting people to my side. Yeah, I, I just remove those. Um, most of the, um, um, uh, with my beginning groups, uh, I have the settings are set so that admin have to approve of all posts. So if someone even wants to say, hello, how's everyone's afternoon? Um, I have to get a notification and say, okay, um, and approve it. Um, with my more advanced group, I didn't anticipate that being so much of a problem, but then, you know, a couple of those posts got by, so I changed the settings. So at this point, um, um, let's see, myself and, you know, Chris Barre, who's our, who's our uh, director of our program, um, uh, he, he's there also as an admin because he's taken over my classes at various times. Um, so one of us has to approve of every post. So, yeah, does that, does that sound familiar, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, John, do you keep your students in Facebook um, after they're not in class anymore? Absolutely. Well, yes. Um, always for a while. When, when they haven't been active, say for maybe a year, um, then I'll remove them. Um, but I've had some students who, you know, who've been on for two and three years. They still read things, uh, you know, the click the like button, they'll post comments occasionally. And um, so as long as I see some kind of activity, I'll leave them in the group. I've had quite a number of students who left the classroom for a while, up to a year or more, um, suddenly show up with a message saying, well, I want to come back to class. And so, and um, I'll get the messages usually through Facebook Messenger. And um, um, being part of the group, it sort of keeps it, keeps it on their radar even if they're not coming to class. Um, I, I had a hard stop at three because I have to jump onto a training, but uh, onto a uh, tech support, but um, I don't want to monopolize, but um, the, just wanted to get clarification. You have these groups with different, that are uh, joined by students from different classrooms, sometimes from different organizations, even if it wasn't from different organizations, I would imagine that you teach different things for each classroom, yet everybody sees the posts um, from the different classes. How, how um, is it confusing for students to see people because you take pictures of whiteboards and, and you know, it's, there's class content there. So uh -huh. how does that cross pollination work? Uh, because it seems that it's beyond just the community building and the practicing of the conversation and of the language. It actually has from posts of actual classroom content. So, um, I'm just wondering how that works with the different levels and the different organizations or classes. Well, let me go back. I'm going to go back to the, my, um, oops, go back to the screen again, just to see if I can sort of clarify a little better. Um, there's not quite so much cross pollinization of levels. This group, English for Everyone, is originated for my beginning level students in two different groups. So the posts that they see, um, you know, the lessons or the vocabulary that they're seeing are more and less, more or less um, uh, within the right level for both classes. But you have different. Now, here was for each class, or you need to think, or you, or, or they go together. 
I'm I'm sorry. Most of your most of your question was broken up. I, I think I, I think what you're asking, Christina, is um, do students have access to all of the groups or only no. their own group? No, they don't. This was the second group that I started for a class okay. that I had been teaching on Saturdays uh, at the Auburn Library in Cranston, and this group are. Um, generally higher beginners and lower intermediate. And these group members are, they only see the content of this group. They're not seeing the content of all the other groups. So each, each group is, is completely separate. Um, where's this one? Okay. And this one for transitions to college again, with these 19 members only see this group. They're, it's a completely separate group. They're not linked in any way. So when you did an activity where people saw something from another classroom, it was within one group? Yes. Okay. Yes, that was within one group. That was, um, yeah, those kind of, um, yes. you know, okay. Christmas videos that they were sharing. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, part of, what I was hoping to do was to do a little bit of community building and get people from, um, you know, two different cities talking to each other a little bit. Um, and since they're all more or less at the same level, they have that in common as well. Um, this is the most recent group, which only began. Um, um, a couple of months ago in, uh, in September, and this is for a, a group of NEDP students. It, this is completely post-pandemic um, group. And there's a YouTube video about the Revolutionary War we're going to watch uh, later tonight. And um, um, a lot of um, mostly functional kinds of questions. Um, this class formed completely after the, after the pandemic started. We have never met together in the classroom. So I believe that that has something to do with the tone of the comments that people post and the interaction between them. It's, it's, not as, it's not as personal as it is between uh, students, even, even lower level students who have met each other in a classroom before um, are more, you know, are, are more personable with each other. Here, most of the questions are, or comments are a little bit more perfunctory um, a little bit more directed towards, you know, what are we doing tonight? Do we have a meeting tonight? Um, and things like that. But once again, uh, this group, they, they have access only to this group and not to the others. So, um, hopefully that, I hope that answered the question. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, also from Christina, uh, if you keep students in the Facebook after class, how does that work with your organization's policy? Students having to pay a tuition fee each semester. Um, okay, it, well, RyeFly does have a, um, a annual registration fee, which students just pay once a year. Um, with students who are on the Facebook group, I would not ask them to pay anything unless they were unless they were coming to classes in person. Um, do you only get a room if you're in a private group? Um, actually, that, that, I'm not sure about that. I think you can actually start a room on your personal page. Um, 
I know that that the room um, feature is not available on all the different types of groups. Um, I was recently um, helping my wife set up a similar group for the Poetry Out Loud um, competition page, and we set up a private group there, and that, because the group was connected to Poetry Out Loud's uh, main Facebook page, there was, I, I was surprised there was no feature for that. Um, oh, hi, this is um, Jane Reggio. So I had asked a question about the, the um, room thing, because I didn't see it on the post of point. Oh, I'm on my individual page and there's a, a line later. So if you kind of scroll down towards the top of your page, there is a line to create a room on a personal page. So you don't have oh. to be on a private page. Right, right. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do that. You can do it right on your personal page. I don't know why it wasn't um, it wasn't offered as an option. All of my groups have that option. Um, and um, so uh, I found that it worked, you know, I, I don't know if, if, you know, I know all my colleagues are having a similar experience in having a much more difficult time r reaching beginners um, than more advanced level learners. Um, I found that creating a room with my beginning group, at least in September, I was able to catch a few more people who would come in out of curiosity. And most especially for those who hadn't experienced uh, video conferencing before, um, you know, maybe Skype was as far as they'd been um, uh, before that. Um, it's a very, very scaled down, um, video conference tool um, without the bells and whistles but at least um, at least they get a chance to it gives them a chance to practice with it and maybe ask some questions and gives an opportunity to really speak to them a little bit more directly <coughs> one, one of the things that i know struck me when i saw this the first time and then even again today is just that um you know you post things ahead of time and obviously then they stay up so if I was the kind of person that needs to go back, it's still on there. Or if I'm the person who wants to know what are we doing later, I can go ahead and, and look. And I, and I think, you know, all of that, well, at least for me, sometimes as a learner, helps me feel like I'm a little bit more comfortable because I know what to expect. So mm -hmm. it depends who the learner is, but I think that, you know, those things can, can really be helpful. And, and you're right, a lot of people just get on Facebook, so maybe I'm just gonna check out my school page because I'm on it. You know, you, you just don't, I think you don't quite know. So can I ask a few questions? Sure, sure. go for it. So um, is, is this where you're having your class is on Facebook or is this a supplement to your class? It's a supplement. Okay. It's and a supplement. I, I did, you know, as um, for a period of time, I was doing live streaming videos mm -hmm. on the Facebook group um, before I was able to really get people to come on to Zoom and get used to doing that. Um, at the beginning of the lockdown back in March and April, um, it was pretty much the, the, the first and most readily available way I had of, of reaching out to them. So I was doing that for a couple of months. Uh, mm -hmm. But at this point, it's back to, it's a little bit more like it was in the beginning when I was doing, uh, um, classes in the classroom in that it is a, an adjunct to that. So is there an expectation of how often students would need to check it to see what's going on? Or is there any expectation? Well, yeah, there's an expectation, certainly. It's easy to get your heart broken that way. Um, <laughs> well, I just know that for my students, I meet you know, I meet them uh, face to face. We have class on Zoom, and then I have a lot of different assignments on Google Classroom. So they're already got that component that is a regular part of our class. So I don't know if this is, you know, if this is going to be just another way of doing some of the similar things or. Hmm. 
Because I can see Facebook more as a, a social thing or maybe getting them to post pictures of their life or I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there were times when, uh, you know, I love taking pictures in the classroom and, you know, my students start to get tired of me doing that. So after a while, I would hand my iPad. Uh, every night, I would hand it to a different person and say, okay, you're the class photographer tonight. Just take pictures of whatever you feel like. And then I would get home and I would see what pictures they took and maybe crop them or, or and post a few and say thanks to the person who did the photo taking. And that would, you know, that would trigger conversation, online con texting conversation, um, uh, which is good. But I think what you're, I, I, I think what you're saying is there's a lot of truth to your concern, I guess, in that it's Facebook, it's social media, and people don't approach it with the same attitude that they would Google Classroom, for example. Well, I, 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 I'm, it's more like I certainly would have feel like I needed to have something for them to do at certain times or that some expectation of what's, what it's for um, mm -hmm. with students because I really do push them to use Google Classroom. And so, um, you know, it's just, you know, what's the goal of having pushing them to do another thing or or is it like oh come on once a week check in and leave a comment or post a picture yeah. oh I, I see what you're saying um Susan I'm just going to add a quick line because I know we're also running over but I remember someone else who did a session way back in the spring um used Facebook as part of it and Facebook was only used for social kind social things yeah, so that's this particular t-shirt part, you know, made it for a social thing instead. And that's how um, she was combining it. Yeah. Mm. Um, occasionally I've set up polls, um, you know, especially since the pandemic started and we're the, our scheduling concerns got so unpredictable. And I'd set up a polls where, you know, yes, I want to meet Tuesday morning instead of Wednesday night, uh, for example. Um, I've removed most of those, unfortunately, um, or, or, I, or I would show them. Um, it's not like classroom where you can create an assignment and, you know, everyone gets a notice of the assignment and you can grade them and have a due date. Um, Facebook, Facebook won't offer you that. Um, my expectation was pretty basic. I just wanted my students to practice more outside of class. Uh -huh. That was in the beginning, that was my whole reason for, um, for starting it. Um, <clears throat> um, and uh, it started working and, you know, since the pandemic hit, it sort of transformed into something else. Um, but I find that students are more, more likely to respond to something on, on the Facebook group than on their Google Classroom page. But in my case also, you know, your experience could be very different since you have Google Classroom pages set up and you've got your students used to uh, responding to um, um, assignments or activities that you're posting there. Um, <clears throat> um, I set them up afterwards. I thought, well, let's try this and let's see how it works. And um, I, you know, I found that the responses there were much um, uh, much uh, um, uh, fewer and farther in between. So. Yeah. John, are you teaching lower level or a, a range of ESOL? A range from beginners to um, any DP level. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I knew that. And you're and primarily using Facebook? Do you say it's your, like your number one resource, number one communication um, channel? Be, yeah, actually, 
between between Facebook and email, yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Great. Um, okay. Yeah, I have to run too. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, John. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, thank thanks for thanks for 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 coming, Sherry. Absolutely. All right. Have a good nice afternoon, everybody. Right, you thanks, too. John. thanks, John. Bye bye. I didn't realize we're, yeah, we're going past three here. So yeah. I we have gone past three. So, but you know, if anyone's on that wants to ask you a final question, you're willing to stay on and answer it. I'm certainly willing to stay on and help you answer it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and appreciate this is different than some many of the others that we've done. I think lots of really, um, you know, thoughtful thought-provoking and thoughtful ways of you know working with students so it's all good um i did happen to find um you know every uh, everyone has somewhere to go but i did want to share this with you um if you share it with me it'll be part of the recording so that's that's great too well i'm what i'm going to do is i'm just going to send you a link in the chat okay this is the page that I told you about um, uh, that David Rosen started, where there, it's a, a group of adult educators. Right. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I forgot um, about that. This is, this is that group, and um, I had intended to at least share the link, so... Uh, um, I will also be sending, <clears throat> I'll be sending folks a quick evaluation tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I'll do too is I'll share this link with them so they can go, they can use it that way. Great. So that works out. I always like to get feedback about the sessions and, you know, go from there. So. Thank <laughs> you.